head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, I face some of the fiercest competition, both on and off the field. I am responsible for putting the best team together to deliver the best results. It's important that we have the right team members in place that will not give up during intense competition. In a competitive housing market, it is even more important that you hire the right team to help you throughout the process. That's why I hire the team at Southeast Mortgage. Give them a call today and win the day. And uh, another reminder, no live training. All right. Appreciate it, Claude. Um, as we get moving forward for uh, Georgia, Florida, our guys took uh, Friday, Saturday, uh, Sunday off and uh, get ready to go back to work today. Um, got another exciting matchup with these guys in Jacksonville. We got a lot of respect for Billy. I've known him for a long time. Uh, one of the most intelligent coaches I've been around in terms of preparation and understanding what it takes to run a, a program and organization. Uh, I think he does a fabulous job. I know a lot of guys on his staff. Um, got a lot of respect for him and, and being a high school coach's son in this state. Uh, we grew up very similar. So um, it's on to the Gators and we kind of started on them <clears throat> last week at the end of the week and uh, looking forward to, to a good week of practice. Kirby, just talking about Billy, the, the time you guys spent together on the staff at Alabama, just what did he bring to that staff, and, and what has stood out to you with his head coaching career, even going back to when he was at UL Lafayette? Um, he, he's, like I said, he's very thorough. He's an extremely hard worker, a uh, great husband and father, but he's a good leader of men. And uh, I knew from the first time he got to Alabama, I don't know what year it was, but whatever year he, he got there, he was going to be – uh, really good because he, he paid attention to detail, um, took a lot of notes. Um, he, he was just really smart. You know, he was there to learn, and um, I think he capitalized on his time he spent there to look at football from you know a different perspective maybe than what he had looked at previously, and uh, was really successful at ULL, which is a, a great school, great location, a lot of good football players, but uh, they won a lot of football games uh, within there. <clears throat> Kirby, you, you told us last week, smile um, when they would get back to practice a little bit. I wanted to see what his status was and then what were you know what were you guys able to do with AD and Jalen and uh, Kendall as that week went on? Uh, smile was able to practice towards the end of the week, did a good job. Uh, didn't see him really yesterday in terms of doing anything. Um, so smile looked good towards the end of last week. You know, Jalen and AD, like I said last week, weren't really practicing with us, trying to get back. Uh, we're hopeful to get those guys back, but still don't know. Uh, and Kendall was able to practice some non-contact on, uh, I guess it was Thursday, the last practice we had. So we're expecting him to be able to go today. Kirby, from an offensive standpoint specifically last week, what were some of the things y'all really looked at and honed in, and honed in on as far as maybe getting back to the form that, that y'all showed earlier in the year? Just situational football. I mean, this, the things you work on in the off week are number one, opponents. Uh, number two, a lot of work. Probably 90% of our work was good on good against each other. Um, situational football. Third down, two minute, red area. Uh, second ten, third down, uh, team run. I mean, there's no area in three practices that we didn't work on. A little bit more on the uh, injuries. Uh, just. Just the effect of Jalen not being out there. Obviously, you know he's an exceptional player, and, and his injury. Obviously, he had the knee right after he had the ankle. Is is the knee the issue 100 percent at this point? And kind of uh, on that note as well, AD. I never really saw what happened to him in that game, but it, it didn't seem like it was so bad. But it obviously has lingered. A long AD's time. is a high ankle sprain. In high ankle sprains, when you talk to everybody across the NFL and across college football, it's hard to pinpoint uh, a measurement. The first thing you look for is do they need to do the repair? Do they need the tightrope and then and things like Arian did? His was not uh, that kind of injury, but it is lingering. It's, uh, it's a pain in the butt. So he's battling to come back and doing everything we ask. In terms of Jalen's, it's, it's the knee right now. It's MCL, but. Uh, degree of that, severity of that, just depends on conditioning level, how fast he can get back. Uh, he's working to get back, and we're hopeful to get both of them back. Yeah, I was going to ask about Jalen as well. Um, in terms of what aspect of his game is most missing from the, from the defense when you don't have a guy out, out there like him that seems to be a difference maker, where do you, you see that uh, when you watch film and watch your defense perform? 
Uh, I don't understand what you're asking. But what do we miss about him? Yeah. He's a really good football player. I mean, he's y'all seen the plays he's made over his time here. He's he's not he has not been healthy since the very first play of the season. The very first play of the season against Oregon is when the ankle injury occurred. Now he continued to play through that ankle injury. Uh, some of that, some of that I think was on adrenaline, but the ankle bothered him from that point forward. And then you know you know when he injured the knee. And the knees kind of bothered him since then. It's not a combination of because he feels really good about his ankle right now. It's more to do with his knee. It just so happened that right when he got back from the ankle, he got the knee. And you know he's a phenomenal player. I think you can look at the history there and see. And how does it affect you? It you know it affects your depth more than anything. Um, but it's not like he's a one one trick pony. I mean he's like a he can really pass rush good. He can really play the run. He's disruptive. So he's not a you know it affects just our pass rush. No. It, it affects everything because he's a he's a really phenomenal player, and you'd like to have him out there. Kirby, I think Chris uh, made his starting debut against Florida a couple years ago after Richie's accident, and just seeing him up here talking today, I think he was the only Georgia guy that made a couple of these midseason All American teams. Can, can you put into perspective what kind of program guy Chris Smith's become? You know, since that opportunity came up from a couple of years ago, how he's grown. Well, first off, he, he was a really good prospect in high school. He played corner, he played safety, he could do it all. Uh, he came here, we, 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 we flirted with him at corner and at safety he really kind of played where we needed him to play uh, and he's been able to do that since coming here. He, he's taken reps for two to three years at corner, he's taken him at safety, he's played nickel star. I mean he's one of these versatile DBs that can kind of do it all um, because he understands leverages, he knows where his health is, he's an instinctive football player. Um, and you know we're lucky to have him, and uh, really proud of the way he's. You know he didn't have success right away. He's one of the guys that truly became a better football player through development, practice habits, learning the system. And he had some good players in front of him when he first got here, and um, he's been able to work his way into a, a, a good football player. Kirby, there's uh, analytics out for you with that say that basically this offense has been better with AD on the field than not. Have you all found that and what makes him a difference maker, even if he isn't the one that's being targeted? Well, AD is a really good wide out. You know, he has twitch. Um, he has explosive quickness. Um, when you watch just across the country and you watch all these teams play, there's, you know, there's, there's dynamic receivers. I think AD is a dynamic receiver. Um, he's, he's, he's hard to cover one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, I get to see him you know, every day at practice when he's been healthy, and you know that you've got a guy that can – that can go compete, do some things. He's got toughness. He's got quicks. Um, but to say it's been substantially different with him in or out, I don't know what the analytics say. And you know, it's hard to hard to figure that because so much of that's based on what personnel grouping we're in. You know, what, what, how the defenses play us. You know, are they off? Are they soft? Are they cover two? Are they split safety? Are they middle field closed? There's a lot of uh, things that go into that. So I know that we're a better football team with AD healthy, 100% but we're trying to get him back as fast as we can. Kirby, getting ready to face Anthony Richardson, just how much development have you seen from him getting ready for this game, particularly compared to last year when he was sort of thrown in the mix? No, he's grown a lot, and, and he's gotten considerably better to me during this season. Like, like from the start of the season, game one, you watch every game in sequence and you say, man, this guy is growing and getting better, and they don't just limit things for him. Like they, they put a lot of shift motion, they put a lot of things on top of him to handle, and he manages those well. The the toughest thing dealing with Anthony Richardson is is, is how you affect him because uh, you got to be careful. You know, the, the, some of the, some of the runs he's had have been better than than backs have across the the country, and he's had 60 and 70 yard runs and. Uh, he can take off at any point in time, and, and you don't know who's going to have him or who can get him down. Uh, he's got elite arm talent in terms of strength. Um, they clean things up for him on a lot of reads, and uh, he does a really nice job. So uh, I give them a lot of credit, Billy a lot of credit for the development, what he's done from the start of the season uh, to now, uh, and being successful both with his legs and his arm. Coach, you're obviously very familiar with Brent Cox, and they've got some big guys on the interior as well. What's your initial thoughts on the Florida defensive front? Extremely disruptive. You know, the size and girth in the middle is what you want in the SEC to control run games and control the, the A and B gaps. And then they still got the edge guys, with Britain being probably the most disruptive guy that we played in terms of just violence, striking, knockback, setting edges, uh, affecting the quarterback. 
Um, he's a game breaker at that. Coach, I think I have some idea of what you think or care about rankings, but uh, you know. They obviously don't matter until next week when the college football rankings come out. But how much have you been able to keep up with, uh, you know, teams in, in your rear view mirror like Oregon and, and South Carolina who haven't lost since you played them? Is that at all validating for you guys? Because I'm, I'm sure at the time you knew you played well, but you can't be 100% sure who's got what to this point. Is it? Is there anything validating about uh, what you've seen from those teams since you got past them? You answer the question initially. I haven't been paying attention to it. I mean, I, I really haven't. I, our focus has been on the next opponent since uh, Thursday of last week. And not to not answer your question, but I just don't concern myself with it. Coach, uh, I guess the, your halftime talk last year, we all got to hear a little bit of it. Uh, I guess I'd ask you how you pick and choose and um, from being a – uh, assistant versus the head coach because I know you can't do it every game or every practice but how do you know when and how much of it is I'll calculate is the right word or is it just all gut when you deliver messages to your teams yeah I think it's just how you feel like where your team is you know what 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 what's what space they're in in terms of confidence level focus attention to detail uh, and, and a lot of times it comes better when it comes from the players and the leaders within the team which the best teams have guys capable of, uh, of communicating to each other and they listen to each other uh, much more than they listen to to me so I don't you know I don't calculate it figure out when I'm gonna do it if it's if the appropriate time is there and think we need it then certainly we do we do it Kirby you guys put out a video last week of a post practice treat for your players uh, I want to ask you about why, why you guys wanted to do that and uh, what you like better final case or ice cream uh, I had to go speak to the superintendents of Georgia, um, which they were in town, so I never got to see it. I, I, I bolted off right after practice, so I didn't get to partake. Uh, but I, mean, I was glad the players were able to get a, a, a treat, you know, for a, a, a off week. We got some guys that need to gain weight, so that's, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> Do you have any uh, plans to do anything with recruits this this coming week? Do you have any? Um, I mean, I know it's kind of weird that you can host them but not host them. Do you have anything set up for some of the recruits that could be coming to this game? Do you have any tickets set aside for them? Uh, we we're allowed to use tickets, but we can't host them. I mean, we can't do anything. So there's, I never understood. I never understand what 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 would we do with them? We can't legally see them. We can't talk to them. We can't host them. We can't visit with them. Uh, we can say there's a ticket at the gate, um, enjoy the game. So that, that's really all we can do, and uh, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll, we'll have uh, uh, some kids go to the game. Raise your hand, any other questions? All right, thank you.